Greetings, fellow masters. It is I, the Bell Tolls. That's, uh, the new intro. You like it? I gotta sound powerful if I'm using the avatar of the mighty King Hassan. Anyway, let's get into some farming strats. Today, we're delving into Hyde Park. Currently, it has the best drop rate for Forbidden Pages, at least until Shinjuku comes out. It's a material that's always in demand, and many servants hunger for them. Also, as an added bonus, this map also has bones in all three varieties of caster gems. Blue Lancer gems, too. Now, let's get into the farming. The first wave is easy peasy, having three Lancers of a little over 7,000 health. These can be taken down by just about any AoE NP, including a Rash, despite the class disadvantage. If you're desperate, they can be busted down without too much trouble, but it's definitely recommended to use an NP. This is going to be a trend, just as a heads up. Wave 2 starts to ramp up the difficulty with a 90k caster, 40k caster, and another 7k lancer at the back. You'll definitely be using an AoE here, and if it isn't strong enough, you may have to use face cards to finish off the 90k. Lastly, Wave 3 is 3 casters with decently high health pools, ranging from 90,000 to 110,000. This is what you're going to save your most powerful rider AoE for. With the waves now covered, it's time to get into the farming comps. I'm going to try out a format where I list 3 different tiers of farming. The first tier will be for free to play or cheap to play players, with a heavy focus on budget craft essences and servants. The second tier are for those that are in between cheap to play and whale status. You can expect some higher tier servants and more powerful CEs. Finally, there's the whale comps. These will go all out on the servants and CEs and power through everything. Sound good? Good. Let's check out some team comps. Starting up, we have the free to play slash cheap to play segment. This one took a bit of playing around to figure out, but I think I have something here most players can use. It does come with one big caveat though, you need a support waiver. I feel like most people have access to a support waiver, so hopefully this isn't a game breaker. Anyway, here's the comp. Let's go through this piece by piece and I'll explain my rationale behind it. Also, I'll have this comp running in the background to show you how I played it. We're starting off with a rash for wave 1. He's a bronze servant that pretty much anyone should be able to easily NP5. His third skill gives him NP charge, and surprisingly cheap to skill up. The diciest part here is the MLB and imaginary element on him, which not everyone will have access to. You could replace this with the lower tier Dragon's Meridian, but you'll need to do an arch chain to make up the NP loss. And obviously, even a non MLB Kaleidoscope will do the job just fine if you have one. Honestly, if you have any CEs that start you off with NP charge, you can use that. I just used the imaginary element because I feel it's more accessible than something like K-Scope. Next in line is Medusa, another relatively available servant. You can get her from the regular gacha rolls or friend summoning. I mainly chose her because she synergizes with the CE choice and she has a flat 20% self charge, which is excellent for our purposes. The craft essence I've chosen is the recently released Heaven's Feel, which was given out for free to all players during a login event. Unfortunately, if you missed that, your options are pretty limited. See what MP charge CEs you have and see if you can make them work. In the event you don't have a decent Medusa, you could swap her for Edward Teach. Like a Rash, he's a bronze servant that's relatively easy to get higher skill and MP levels for. While he doesn't have an MP charge skill, his damage buffs give him respectable damage. You'll just need the face card to allow him to fire off Queen Anne's Revenge. Whichever choice you go with, you'll have to face card the rest of Wave 2 down, so choose what's available to you. Finally, and this may be the most contentious choice, we have Santa Alter. Hopefully you were able to participate in the Christmas events and get her. If not, you'll have a hard time clearing this node. Not much is to be said about the reasoning here. She's a free MP5, has mana burst, and hits incredibly hard with her Noble Phantasm. The CE choice here was tough, but I sell it on Halloween Princess because it's a fairly old CE that more people are likely to have. Limit broken, it gives 50% charge and 20% more NP damage, which makes it great for farming use. If you're missing Santa Altar, it might be easier to find a friend Drake with a good CE. At least then you won't slog through the final wave as much. The mystic code of choice here is the Mage's Association, as it gives you a 20% MP charge on whichever servant needs it. If you're struggling to fire off NPs, it's invaluable, and for this comp in particular, it's necessary. This team should be fairly easy to assemble, and as long as you have the CEs that grant MP charge, you should be able to farm this node at a reasonable pace. Now then, let's move on to the next tier. For those who have been luckier or spent a bit more money, I present the following composition. There's not too much different here, but there are some key changes that might put this out of range of the F2P slash C2P player. Arash is the same, we didn't change anything here. Stella is just too good to pass up on. Big change number one is the addition of Drake. In this instance, her skills can still be rank 1. 
You'll need a friend waiver or some arts cards to get her the missing NP, but besides that, she's fairly solid for wave 2. I've also given her Halloween Princess because again, availability, and it synergizes well with her. Alternatives to Halloween Princess include pretty much anything that provides 50% NP charge. Holy Night Supper, Golden Sumo, most 5 star event CEs, etc. Last up, we have Santa Altar again, this time with a K-Scope. This alleviates a lot of the pressure of trying to get her to 100%. K-Scope level doesn't matter too much as she'll flatten the third wave regardless, especially with Drake's NP damage buff. For Mystic Code, Mage's Association works well again, especially if your Drake isn't skilled up. If it is though, you can use whatever you feel like for MC experience, unless of course all your MCs are maxed already. Now we're moving on to tier 3, the whale tier, which I can't even fully show because I myself don't have what it takes to pull it off. We can use our imaginations though. Obviously if you're whaling, you have a lot of options available to you. So many, in fact, that there's not a whole lot to recommend here. You probably have multiple K-scopes. You probably have a high NP level Drake. You can really just mix and match riders here and end up with a successful comp. As long as they're AoE and do sufficient damage, you're in the clear. In this particular instance, I have Nita Chris for Wave 1, as she has an insane MP charge and doesn't even need a CE. That's why lunchtime is on her, but you can equip her with anything. I would have kept a Rash here, but you've probably banned him a long time ago. Of course, any AoE will work for Wave 1, just pick your favorite and make sure it has enough MP charge. I've got Drake again for Wave 2, but honestly at NP5 she could easily clear Wave 3, so it's up to you. I might be wrong, but I don't think you even need to use her buffs for that. Lastly, Santa Altar is added again, but with an MLB'd K-Scope. This whole team could have MLB'd K-Scopes and work fine, to be honest. At this point, it doesn't even matter. If your K-Scopes are near or at level 100, you can even slot in weaker riders if your Drake or Santa Altar are max bond or close to it, because they'll just do that much damage. Sorry that this section isn't very technical, but I don't think this node needs hardcore theory crafting if you have these kind of resources available. AoE riders, K-Scopes, done. And with that, We've reached the end of this breakdown of Hyde Park. Obviously, the comps listed here are not the end-all be-all. Fate Go offers a lot in the ways of experimentation, kind of like an open-ended puzzle. Hopefully, I've at least given you some ideas on how you can farm forbidden pages for the rest of your days. Let me know what you thought of this kind of video. Did I miss anything? Make a huge error? Was I not in-depth enough? This channel is still in its infancy, so I'll be developing the style and how technical I want to make things. Tell me your thoughts, and I'll try to improve. With that, I'm just about done here. May your farming be bountiful, and may the bell never toll for you. Not yet, at least. Farewell, fellow masters. Until next time.